Gina, thank you so much. Uh, we got to talk about a troubling statistic this morning. There are about 17,000 foster kids in Arizona who are in need of homes right now. However, there are only about 700 foster homes available. Clearly not enough. May is Foster Care Awareness Month, and one group is tirelessly trying to make sure that we are able to help meet this growing need. Arizona's Children Association is the largest and oldest foster care provider in the state, and they are looking for qualified foster families, and we want to talk about what that involves. So joining us this morning is Nikki Libby, who is with the organization, and she's also joined by Jamie and Robert Villa, who are currently foster parents uh, to a little girl that they are in the process of adopting. So congratulations. I know that could be a, a stressful process, but certainly a beautiful one. Uh, so let me start uh, first with you. Uh, incredible need. So many kids out there. Um, what kind of message do you want to get to those folks at home who think maybe I can do this, but they're not quite sure uh, that they have what it takes? Absolutely. Well, I would say that one of the biggest and best things to know is that even if you can't become a foster parent, there are so many additional ways that you can help mm -hmm. um, children that are in need. So you can become a Thrive Mentor, um, or you can even just do a simple tax donation to our agency to help reach out to those children. And really, any anything that you can do on any level is going to make a Absolutely. difference. Absolutely, too many kids. Way too many. Okay, uh, so let me let me bring this home to your home and tell me how you got to this place when you started to first think about fostering. Sure, so we first started thinking about it when we were um, first dating, we've always said that we wanted to have some of our own children and possibly adopt one. Uh, we had two of our own biological children and then that year that we were planning our last child, I was diagnosed with late stage breast cancer. And so we thought this is the perfect opportunity to start the foster process. We had the option probably to do private adoption, but our hearts were always in foster care. Mm -hmm. And we pursued Arizona's Children Association just because it was the most um, well known in Arizona. It was the most readily available and really provided us with the best service. So many people who say, gosh, I think maybe I'd like to do this, but I don't know if I could go through the heartbreak of bonding with a child who comes into my home wanting to adopt that child and for whatever reason, whether it's reunification with the biological family or other factors, um, I, I'd be too fearful of that, of that instability. So talk to me through that process and how you made the decision to to go through this, um, even though there are always some unknowns. Sure. Yeah, I, I think we we're mostly concerned about the attachment our children would have with our with our foster child. And then initially we went through, uh, we had f uh, four children that we've uh, been lucky enough to foster. And really what we just come to terms with is that each one of those children we were, we felt such a connection with and mm -hmm. really a love for them that it became very clear to us that uh, that it was more than just um, you know worrying about our attachment with them because uh, the love that you provide these children I think just provides just like an endless amount of hope for them and it did uh, there's so many unintended consequences for us too that we weren't even aware of and if anything it's brought our family closer and, uh, and we're just lucky that we were able to share it with our, our current foster family. We've been showing some pictures of your beautiful family <laughs> and the love is very evident and anybody who gets to touch a little bit of that for any period of time is going to be all the better and that's probably something to think about. So say someone at home is saying, hey, maybe, maybe me. Um, what do they need to uh, start with? What are the steps that you go through to maybe qualify to become a foster parent? Well, if they were looking to become a foster parent, I'd say first and foremost, um, go onto our website and look for orientation dates. That's going to be the biggest and best way to kind of get an idea of what this is all about. Okay. Um, attend an orientation and from there we can kind of guide you into those next steps. And you'll likely get to encounter families who are, are ahead of the process uh, yes. and are able to lend their perspective and that oh, is so, absolutely. so valuable. Well, thank you so much for being here this morning and sharing your story and let's hope that it makes an impact on some of those kids who are waiting for um, a safe, loving home, possibly a forever home and congratulations and uh, we can't wait to see you after your finalization, right? <laughs> That'll be a big party day, won't it? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we'll thank put you. more information on AZ Family over the contacts that we've talked about. April?